five simple ways to engage email subscribers with Facebook. And the agenda is as follows. Why? Why does this matter? Why do we want to engage email subscribers when they are already on our email list, right? Why do we care about them? Shouldn't we be working on getting new email subscribers for our email list? Talk about sharing. Uh, so we'll talk about these five ways, basically sharing top stories from your Facebook page and your newsletter, asking supporters to share campaigns, asking subscribers to like your page, something that a lot of people often forget, experimenting with sweepstakes or giveaways. That's a little bit more of a um, advanced strategy. And then, of course, turning new subscribers into spokespeople, getting new subscribers to share your email newsletter with their friends, right? Uh, so why does this matter? Uh, basically, more engaged email subscribers equals more engaged donors and volunteers. The way that I always think about this is a little clicks, even if it's someone opening your email or clicking on a link in your email, be it your email newsletter or a direct appeal email that you're sending out or any sort of mass communication to your email subscribers, those opens and those clicks, you know, they're little, little teeny tiny actions, but you could think of them as little yeses, right? When someone opens your email, they're saying yes, yes, I'm interested. When they read your email and click on links or click on images or click on videos in the email, they're saying yes. These are all little yeses and these lead to bigger yeses, which is um, donors, volunteers, retain, retaining donors. Donor retention is huge, a uh, big issue with a lot of organizations. You know, um, I, I think on average, a donor retention is not that great. Um, I don't have the percents, uh, I don't have the statistics in my mind right now, but they're not that great. Uh, <clears throat> so, and you know, job one for every nonprofit anyhow is to retain the new donor that they just got, retain that volunteer. And the easiest way to do that is to engage them in email, regular email communication, and of course, social media. Right. So more engaged email subscribers means more engaged donors and volunteers. And here are five specific ways that you can put this into action. OK, the first one is sharing your top Facebook posts in your newsletter. So many of you have a regular email newsletter that you're sending out. Chances are it's a monthly newsletter. Right. So next time you send out that email newsletter, carve out a little part in that newsletter uh, for your Facebook post, right? And this will be the, you know, what people talked about on Facebook this month. You know, the most engaging post on our Facebook page was this one. And here's what it was about. These are all the conversations. Click here to check it out. Click here to add your comment, right? What this does is this uh, kills two birds with one stone. And I'm sorry if there are any humane society organizations on the phone or on the webinar, but this is a obviously a phrase. So killing two birds with one stone and it creates engagement, more engagement for that post, which is already performing really well. Uh, and number two, it allows you to vet content. And basically you're letting your Facebook fan base tell you, uh, hey, this is great content. You should share this with your email subscribers, right? And so you use your Facebook insights to quickly find your top posts, right? So regularly doing this, make this a regular habit of including your top posts in your email newsletter. So you're going to connect these two together. Uh, the uh, image I always have lately is maybe because I'm maybe because sometimes I'm hungry, but Reese's peanut butter cups. Remember the commercial in the eighties, if you're old enough to have lived in the eighties, which I'm sure some of you are, uh, you remember that commercial, you got your peanut butter and my chocolate. No, you got your chocolate and my peanut butter. Uh, the two together are better than each one individually. And of course we've got Reese's peanut butter cup and that's the same with Facebook and email, the two together, mixing them together in really smart strategic ways are much better than each channel separately. Okay. Number two, ask supporters to share campaigns. So if you have a specific campaign that you're, um, you know, focusing on, uh, a, an event that's coming up, a fundraiser, some sort of big campaign that you're working on, use your email to explicitly ask uh, your email subscribers to share the campaign with their friends. 
right? So some questions. Uh, one question would be, is the campaign urgent? Is there a sense of urgency about it? They have to do it now. You have to share this now, okay? Uh, make it easy to share in your email newsletter with a Facebook sharer, which is a basically a URL that you can construct, and I'll show you how to do that on the next slide. And obviously you wanna test the sharing before you send the email, okay? So what does this look like? In this case, this is a, an email from the Soy, I believe it's a Soy Dog Foundation, let me see. Uh, no, this is another organization in the UK, they're talking about some issue. And in the newsletter, there are various ways that email subscribers can share this campaign. And that's all that they're asking, by the way. They're not saying, hey, give us some money. They're saying, share this. We really need to get the word out about this, okay? So uh, this is how you put this together. So asking supporters to share a campaign, all you have to do is create your own sharing link by adding your own campaign URL. So this might be the URL to your donation page. It might be a URL to your uh, email subscribe page. It might be a URL to a petition, but it's the page, the landing page on your website where you want people to go, okay? And of course, you're gonna use your email subscribers, your community, people that already like, know, and trust you. You're gonna encourage them, as we, as I showed you with the previous slide, you're gonna encourage them, hey, share this with your friends, okay? Uh, so the way that you construct this is you use this URL, uh, basically facebook.com forward slash, forward slash sharer, uh, period, PHP, question mark, you, equals, and you could see this, it's kind of small, but you'll get the slides and you could see it. Uh, and then all you do is you take your URL and you add it after that. What this does is that when you take this entire URL and you embed it into your email newsletter, kind of like these guys did, they embedded it into a link, basically an image in that the Facebook share image. They just embedded that link right into that image. You could also do it with text. As soon as someone clicks on this, a browser window pops up, a little pop-up window. And of course we recognize this browser window uh, where it's a share link, right? And people who click on this link, this, this pop-up will appear. They can add their own comments about the link that they're sharing and then they share it, okay? What's really powerful about this is that you're getting people who are in your database, your community, people who like, know, and trust you, you're getting uh, them and you're encouraging them to share the campaign with their friends, right? And that's really what you want. It's basically word of mouth marketing, okay? Birds of a feather flock together. You want to tap into your people's friends, the friend network. And this is a very simple but powerful way to do it. Um, just make sure that call to action is really clear and there's a sense of urgency. People have to do this now, okay? So number three is asking subscribers to like your page. Uh, and recently, Facebook has announced that they are deleting um, inactive Facebook users. They always kind of go through this process of cleaning out their um, database, you know, getting rid of Facebook users that really aren't Facebook users, they're fake accounts, or they're just not even active. They haven't been active for months. So they're cleaning that out, and you might notice that your page likes has decreased, possibly. Okay, so if you go to your Facebook page, you look at your likes report, you might notice that there's a, a, a smaller number, right? And that's okay, because what you're gonna end up with is a more quality fan base, right? Now, the best uh, type of quality fan base for your Facebook page are really people that like you, that really like you, as I say right here, who really like your organization. Not, not from a Facebook perspective, clicking on like, liking your page, because that's pretty easy, um, <clears throat> but really liking your organization. So people who are in your database, email subscribers, people who are getting your email newsletter, those folks are past the honeymoon phase, as, as I always say, and they are uh, really your ideal Facebook fans. So you really, really want your email subscribers to like your Facebook page. And this is a great example from American Rivers. They dedicated an entire email to this one um, goal, right? This one goal. And they say, 
Do you like rivers, clean water, and protecting wildlife? If you answered yes, then like our Facebook page. And here's what you're going to get when you like our Facebook page. And there are a couple of calls to action. Will you take a second to like us on Facebook and let your friends know? Uh, and then help us spread the word by liking our Facebook page. Right. So don't forget, when you send out a message like this, ask them a couple of different times, but make it about them. Don't make it about your organization. You know, we're trying to reach a certain number of fans. Don't say that. Say, hey, you, we want to hear your voice. If you're, if you like X, Y, or Z, in this case, it's rivers, clean water, and protecting wildlife, then like our Facebook page. And obviously, they like these things because they're on the email list. Okay. Um, now, number four is just experimenting with sweepstakes. So uh, people love getting free stuff. Uh, and if you have swag, T-shirts, um, coffee mugs, anything that looks really great, uh, it's hard to find. Uh, yeah, swag normally doesn't look that great and that exciting. But if you happen to have swag that looks great, you can... Um, regularly give away that stuff to your email subscribers, to your Facebook fans in one of two ways. One is to have um, a formal um, campaign on your Facebook page where you would create a custom tab, just like Best Friends Animal Society did, and it says enter to win today's holiday giveaway, right? So people can put in their name, their email, the first name, last name, click on I agree to the official rules and enter the contest. Of course, the next step in the process is, hey, thanks for entering, share this with your Facebook friends. That's always the next step, all right? Now, if your swag isn't really that great, uh, I kind of like how they, uh, I like this t-shirt, for example, it's, it's pretty cool looking. I would definitely, oops, sorry, I would definitely wear the t-shirt for sure. Uh, so if you're, uh, swag is like that. Great. If not, find maybe a partner or a local retailer who might be willing to give away something. Uh, so you can do it this way or you can uh, be treated even more um, uh, simple. And that's a, simply a timeline contest. And that's where you simply post an update on your page and say, uh, you know, tell us what you think about this issue or your idea or your thoughts. Um, Anyone who comments will be um, entered to win a, you know, this really cool thing, whatever the giveaway item is. It could be a book. It could be a bike on the on the top end, probably not a bike, but it could be, uh, you know, something relevant to the to the organization that is low cost, but still something that people would like. You know, they would really want a, a chance to win that. Um, and you simply have people either like the post, comment on it or uh, post a photo to your page. There are a number of different ways you could do this. But once you have that timeline contest, send an email out to your email subscribers and have them participate. It gives them, again, a way to engage with your organization in a way that doesn't require an uh, donation and <clears throat> it's easy to do, right? And remember, the little yeses add up over time. Little yeses add to a, lead to a big yes. and uh, I can tell you, I've worked with a lot of nonprofits, and I can tell you there's definitely a correlation. Whenever I see an organization, they have an email list where their open rates are high, click-through rates are high, and they're getting a lot of engagement in their email list, there's always a direct correlation to how much money they're able to raise or how many donations they're able to convert you know, from, that, from that list. Okay, So this is uh, experimenting with sweepstakes. And then number five is turning new subscribers into spokespeople. So the moment that someone joins your email list, that is a very, not only is it a critical moment, but it's a short moment. It's very short. You know, they join your email list, they sign your petition or pledge, or they make a donation, and they're all excited. Yeah, this is so great. I'm really passionate. I feel really good about what I just did. That's the time when you ask them, share this with your friends, share this with your friends. OK, uh, and here's an example that I use on my website and also another example from human rights campaign. So after a donation is made, take a moment to spread the word. 
this is the time. This is the moment that you have to take advantage of. OK, now an extra one extra bonus, I guess, is to make sure that your newsletter, your email newsletter that people go and they sign up, make sure that that page, that URL has been added to your Facebook page call to action. So here we have Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. There's a button, obviously it says sign up. When people click on it, they are redirected or a new tab opens up or window opens up and they are redirected to their email newsletter page, which they can then fill out really quickly. Email, first name, last name, zip code, and so forth. Okay. So those are five simple ways to engage email subscribers plus an extra one. I, I mentioned that extra one only because the Facebook page call to action button is relatively, it's a relatively new feature. And uh, of course you guys are busy. So maybe some of you overlooked, oh geez, I forgot about this. So this is more of a reminder. Okay. So now I'm going to open it up for questions.